Shalom, welcome to our daily afternoon class of Rabbi Nachman and Peter and Patreon. We are holding in Torah 78, about um, 25 lines down in the first long paragraph. And, you know, last time we learned about the idea that wherever your damage is done, that's the place we have to return to fix. That doesn't seem to be so metaphysically out, you know, mind-blowing. But when we cause damage with speech, we have to go back to the root of speech. And Rabbi Nachman says here that we have to take our speech back and reattach it to Hashem. Because we detached our Hashem from Hashem by using our speech in the wrong way. I hope that's clear, right? It's worth it one more time. <laughs> if I said something wrong to somebody, I got to go back and fix it. First, I apologize. But then I got to realize, wait a minute, why was I using my speech? Anything other than praise and longing and prayer and learning and all the good things that speech gives us. And instead, I used my speech somewhere I shouldn't. I hurt people's feelings to make jokes that didn't need to be made. You know, I'm the first guy to stand in line to, to have her a laugh. But, you know, <laughs> you know, if, if someone else is suffering because of it, it's not worth it. Now, listen to what he tells, though. He goes on to tell us, when we return to Hashem with our words, and we're uniting the divine presence with the master, Kuchabarichu, the infinite being, <clears throat> something big is going to happen. Very big. And this is global. Nigla Allah, Kavod Hashem, the glory of Hashem will be revealed. So, you know, my, my four-year-old says something he shouldn't say, and we tell him, okay, do tshuva, you know, say you're sorry, and he, and he, and he oh, mm, doesn't want to, you know, and he's just good, making faces, and his shoulders go up, and his back goes back, and and then a few minutes later, Abba, Saba, I, I, I said, I'm sorry, right? And you see, that moment is the glory of Hashem. Now, because the four-year-old is kind of cute, but that moment, we got to catch that moment. It's so refined and quick. That's the glory of Hashem. When uh, someone comes back, uh, an energy is released. The Rebbe gives it a name. That's the glory of Hashem being revealed when a human being fixes something like that. And that brings the Divine Presence closer to all of us. And then all eyes will see to the flesh. Together as one, we will see that the flesh is emanating the light of God. Mi basarich hazayel ukai, said Job. Ki pi Hashem diber, then they will see that the, the mouth of Hashem has spoken. It's not necessarily just a four-year-old. That there's a reverberation of the King of Kings behind human speech when we return to Hashem by repair. And that is to say, that when you unify your speech with Hashem, that your speech is no longer this, uh, another thing that you do in the world called talking. No, speech is a very precious tool. And it's so precious, it has the power of re revealing the honor of Hashem. And this is this unification of the transcendent and the imminent, the feminine and the masculine, powers of God. And then the glory of a God will be revealed. And then he tells us this glory is also called Shekhinah. So it's not just the power that's riding on the breath of the words of truth and of tshuva, but it's the cloud of glory, like the clouds of glory. Remember in the desert, they had seven of them. So they almost have been saying the right things <laughs> for 40 years in the desert. Because then the illumination of the Shekhinah will grow and expand more and more. And can you imagine if this happened in like one city? Like everybody was onto this in one city? What that city would be like? And what if that city was Jerusalem? You would wonder what's happening. And it's going to happen. And this is the idea of kingship. You know, if, if you walk into a city and you don't think anything's going on, you kind of like you behave like you normally behave. But if someone says, the king's here, he just flew in, you'd be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Everybody would uh, stand up straighter and check themselves very quickly. 
Ki akshav nektan ora. But now, he's writing this 210 years ago. This Shekhinah was, the light of the Shekhinah was diminished very much. Vnechalash. Koha, and her, her strength was weak. As, as the Zohar says, Shekhinah tzavacha, this Shekhinah cries out. Samachuni bashi shot. Right, they placed they placed me in a, in a lower dish in a, in a, a serving vessel. In other words, they've they've dropped the the status of the shechinah to a lowly level. Ki cholat avani because I am sick of love, or should I say love sick? It's a big difference, right? <laughs> I think most of us have well gone through both of those: love sick and sick of love. I you know ava Yisrael, but ava Yisrael. Shekhinah, her main love is Avat Yisrael. And she has uh, love sickness. Shani shochen itam afilu betoch tumatam. And I rely, relax and rely, recline with them in their tumah. V'zeh galut Shekhinah. And this is when the Shekhinah is in exile because she's being taken to lower places that she is nearly not meant to go to. Avo Kamashamru Shayade Shitaken Partsu Malchuba when I fixing this spiritual form, this structure called the Malchut, the kingship, the head of Dibur, and then the speech is united with the source of power behind the speech we're identifying as Malchut, kingship, queenship, kavod, shechina. All of those concepts are bound together. Shahu, Bechinat Malchut, Bechinat Shechina, Gama Imashem. So the indwelling and the transcendent make this unity. Vitkadel, vitkadel, ora, and her light becomes great, and the malchut becomes greater, and the idea of Jewish kingship starts to take root in our heart and our mind. Or penei and this is the idea of the light of the face of the living king. Ainu she'ayadei she'yitene ora, partsuf malchut, that had given illumination to this, <coughs> this face called kingship. Yechol lechiyot then we can live, Melech Chaim, the King of Life, Ki Shoev Chaim Imidat Malchut, because life force is drawn from the idea of Malchut. Now that sounds, well, what do you mean, life force is drawn from Malchut? Life force is drawn from my, you know, my, my coffee, my donut in the morning, and my <laughs> hamburger at night, if that's what you eat. Is it? Is that all it is? A hamburger, or a coffee, and a donut? Is that our life force? Is that what gets you going? Is that what makes you want to be in this world? I doubt it. The, the life force is the, the idea of the king. The kingship is the power of energy expressed in the physical world. It's when you have the ability to accomplish things, when you have ideas and you can make them happen, when your hands can create, when your mouth can create, when your eyes guide you to the creation of new things, powerful ideas that become real in the physical realm. That's malchut. That's kingship. And that gives life. And that life is not the average everyday life that you get from a hamburger, okay? So let's, uh, we're going to stop here because we've got another whole track of literature ahead of us and we're going to keep going with this Torah. And hopefully we're going to get to this level where we can even sense that our speech is connected to the Shekhinah all the way back. And we make this union between the, the male and the female and the transcendent and the imminent. Because they are connected. But it's our job to reveal it. We should all be so blessed. Have a great day, a good week. We'll see you again. All the best.